Tennessee's Wild Side, broadcast for nearly two decades, was originally created through a vision of the Jackson Foundation. The foundation remains a supportive partner in the mission to educate viewers about wildlife, natural resources, and opportunities for outdoor adventure. Tennessee's Wild Side is produced in association with Rockwater TV. Hi friends, welcome to the Wild Side. I'm Steve Hall. 75 years ago, Marguerite Henry wrote the Newbery Award-winning children's book, Misty of Chincoteek. It may be about one little wild pony on the coast of Virginia, but the power of the author's words have reached all around the world and certainly right here in Tennessee. When we first found out we were going to take Wild Side of Chincoteek for the world-famous Pony Pinning Week, there were many sleepless nights, we anticipated the trip, studied all that might happen, made calls, asked questions, and gauged the best way to bring it all back to you. A Humphreys County couple who know the island well and are quite successful in their efforts to bid on these ponies already own several of them, so they graciously offered to help us buy one. Then there were even more sleepless nights pondering all that would take place in order to bring our pony home. There is usually no hurry around horses, but when you're trying to outrun a hurricane, change comes quick. We have just learned the storm is now a hurricane again, regaining strength for its run up the East Coast. The storm kind of split in half, if you cut it in half, and it came by once, and it came by uh, late Thursday into Friday. And so we, we rode around up these guys Thursday evening. Notified that fall pony pickup will be a day early, we're extremely cautious about leaving Tennessee, considering the warnings and anxiously watching the weather. Oh, and Oak, Richmond, all getting heavy rain and wind tonight. Some more power outages will be happening. But certainly everybody on the East Coast getting a piece of Ian. The weather wasn't really anything we thought about back in July when we won the auction bid for pony number 57. She was only a month old, but even then her mother was letting her know there would be a time of weaning. We named her Shinkatik's Beautiful Secret. And two months later at the carnival grounds where a statue of her grandfather stands guard at the entrance, she is separated from her mother and father. Her dad is the all famous Riptide. The Fabio the herd is pretty much the the king. He's chocolate colored, blonde mane, blonde tail. Her mom is Loveland Secret Feather, who's a 2012 mare. And her mom is, is, is a pretty horse. Looks a lot like her, honestly. She looks a lot like her mom. Placed in a holding pen with two other fall pickup ponies, Secret is curious, but doesn't cry out. Her mom barely looks back. Her dad directs the herd out toward the marshlands of Assateague as calm blue skies open up the island for just a few hours to let us in. And so the hurricane's coming back around and it gave us you know, one day of calm weather, one day of uh, semi calm weather today, I think. And then you guys were able to get here, which is a slight miracle in itself. It seems like adversity at the time, but when we are able to navigate the rapidly changing weather, it makes for an unusual opportunity. A lot of times what you see me doing is, is they get here and they don't want to get in the trailer. They're not about it. Or they have to jump up to get in the trailer if it's a stock trailer and they're not, they don't really like that a whole lot. So a lot of times it's a lot like what you see at the auction. Get on one side, kind of lug it around a little bit. Hopefully they walk and don't fight it. Um, I had one riptide full yesterday and I mean, he wasn't having any part of it. Our little secret is the last one left. So she gets to attempt it on her own terms with just a gentle touch from our son Ezekiel and a little patient persuasion. She had six friends leave yesterday, and then she had two other friends leave this morning, so I think she was kind of ready to hop in the trailer with you guys. You're like, yeah, I want to go too. Even the process of putting a halter on this little wild pony is easier than anticipated. That was simple. I, 
I've had quarter horse babies. Not that easy. I feel like right now, if you put a lead rope on her, she somewhat trusts you. And so I think we're off to a really good start. And we are urged to get started and not delay our return trip any longer. A state of emergency is declared for Chincoteague and a voluntary evacuation is announced on this island made famous by the 1947 book Misty of Chincoteague and the 1961 movie Misty. You know, I think we're going to get hit pretty bad with it today and tomorrow. You might remember Misty had a fold during the 1962 Nor'easter. Something like that is pretty much what they're expecting. So I wouldn't get caught on this side of the Chesapeake Bay Bridge. I think Tennessee's weather would be a lot nicer. <laughs> Our rainy trip back to Tennessee begins another adventure as we meet new friends who just want a quick glance at this little Chincoteague pony headed to her new home. A late night arrival lends itself to just sleeping on the trailer with her and then the next day, introducing Secret to her new surroundings. Once acclimated to her new home, Secret settles in for a series of visitors, joyfully entertaining each one. She doesn't seem to have an age preference, but like many horses, she does seem to sense there is a difference. Okay, here goes for Melissa. Thank you, Secret. I always love you. days after her trip home, she walks into Tennessee Equine Hospital like she's always done it, lays down to wait for the veterinarian, and then easily passes her first examination by Dr. Matthew DeLille. The next day, she's put to another test as farrier Greg Mangrum trims her little feet for the very first time. Well, the main thing is to get the toe trimmed back to keep it from splitting. If you, get, uh, if you let the toe grow out too much, it puts pressure on it. It's like leverage. And if she happens to get a little crack or anything, it was split and could cause something that would last her a lifetime. She seems like she's been trimmed all her life, all three months of it. But there's still one thing left that keeps us all curious. Secret's full-blooded sister, Beauty, and half-brother, Twinkie, live in McEwen and are owned by Denny and Teresa Hemphill. So we take her to their Heart's Desire farm to see if these wild ponies from the island of Assateague might somehow recognize or react to each other. Is that not sweet? Twinkie, why do you say that, sweetie, huh? That is amazing. <laughs> Look at him, he's just smelling of her. Does she smell like mama or daddy? I guess daddy. We don't dare remove their ropes. She's too young, and we're not sure what might happen. But just two weeks later, Twinkie's gentle demeanor convinces us we can trust him with his spicy little sister. What are you doing? <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> and then it's back to Tennessee Equine Hospital to make absolutely positively sure we are raising her in the way she should go. She looks good. She's had her vaccines. This is her second round. Um, she's been dewormed properly, and you guys are feeding her properly. She's gaining a little bit of muscle from out playing with her brother. Um, that's really good for him. It's really good for bone and muscle development. So she has a good foundation for developing the way she should. Every single day is an adventure with this little filly. She already has a fan following, especially among a group of photographers who witnessed her birth and want to watch her grow up. 
she couldn't stay on the island. The federal government only allows 150 horses on Assateague. But as you can see, she is easily transitioning to life in Tennessee. The babies are interesting. They trust you. Uh, and when you get them at this age, they really trust you because you have food, you have water. They've been taken away from the only thing that they know. Now they're going to a domestic setting. You know, I, I think that a lot of times they become very much in your pocket. So I uh, hope you plan on having her for the long run because I think she's going to want to have you for the long run. We have no idea where this journey is going to take us. We just know it's one we're supposed to be on. People ask us all the time what we're going to do with her, and yet we feel like we're already doing it. Again, thank you to all of you for going with us these last few months and sharing our little secret. There are Chincoteague ponies in several parts of our state, making their own impact in each individual county. And you've probably heard us say over the last few weeks that going to Chincoteague, Virginia to produce the docuseries was intense. Our schedules were tight, there was a lot to coordinate, and each location mattered with so much happening all at once. But back in 1961, when 20th Century Fox filmed the movie Misty, that too must have been quite an outdoor undertaking. So while we were already there, we thought we would ask. The world famous Wild Pony Swim in Chincoteague, Virginia is much the same now as it was back then. It moves along meticulously and yet every summer rounding up the wild herds and planning for Pony Penning Week is a huge task. We have a pony committee, and we have a chairman of that pony committee. You know, we have at least two or three sit-down serious meetings because it is like a well-oiled machine now. You know, we know what to do. We know what days we have to do it. We know when we have to do it, what times we have to do it, and what we're going to do. It's been 61 years since 20th Century Fox came to this little island with a big request for filming the classic movie, Misty. They actually did a whole special swim just for the movie, which is kind of amazing. We, we would never do something like that now, but they did back then because it was a really big deal. The June 1961 release was based on the book Misty of Chincoteague. It's a story researched and written in 1947 by author Marguerite Henry. Although actors portrayed the leading roles of Grandma and Grandpa Beebe, as well as their grandchildren, Paul and Maureen, Producers incorporated actual residents of Chincoteague and the real saltwater cowboys. They're older now, but they were in the movie or, you know, like my grandfather was in the movie. And so if you look, he is riding a, a bay horse and he's got a handkerchief in his back left pocket that is sticking out. And that's how we all, he always had one everywhere he went. So we all knew that and, uh, and we can always see him there. The movie captures the importance of history here, where ponies are rounded up by saltwater cowboys and sold to support the volunteer fire company that's been protecting Chincoteague families since 1924. Yeah, I was born and raised here. My dad's the mayor of the island, so you can say we run deep in the island. We've been here since the 1680s. Been in the fire company since the fire company started, so fourth generation cowboys. It's really a pleasure to live here. The book and movie turn this eastern shore island into a top tourist attraction where the annual swim from Assateague attracts 50,000 visitors and misty descendants are offered at auction. Sold at 4,200, 4,200, Randy gets every We never had any misty descendants over there on Assateague and a few years ago we had some that got donated from her bloodlines back and so now we're starting to have you know, misty foals that can be bought and taken home. So it's really, you know, special and it's great for the fire department, you know, to make um, extra money off of that and be able to support, you know, the ponies and fire and rescue and EMS. So it all works around in one big circle. The circle of financial support includes the carnival, first authorized by the fire company in 1925 and reenacted for the movie 36 years later. They went and got all the kids out of school and were like, hey, we're gonna go film a movie, come down to the carnival and ride rides, which, you know, sounds awesome. So they all did that and they did a special little roundup and swim and they swam them across just like they normally would and did everything pretty much like they normally would. Of course, they staged a few things like the, the Misty Rescue and things like that. So pretty wild that they did that for the movie, but 
you know, has definitely, I think, helped us out a lot. And at the root of all the fundraising that inspired the book and movie, the reason they do what they do after 97 successful years is at the very heart of who they are. The way we raise money to buy half a million dollar fire trucks, $200,000 ambulances, and that doesn't include what goes in them, is all raised through this carnival and the pony auction. And not only do we buy life-saving equipment, our vet bills are up to $45,000 a year with our herd. We give out eight scholarships a year to high school seniors. We have a fund that we keep at the pharmacy in case there's people here that can't afford their medicine. Different things like that that people don't even know that we do. What people do know is that one little pony, one book, and one movie are still reaching around the world and attracting visitors to Astig and Shinkatig, where ponies help the people who help the ponies. I'm Annette Knoll Hall on the Wild Side. Tennessee's Wild Side has been a presentation of the Jackson Foundation in association with Rockwater TV.